Once again, that southpaw jab hitting the target of that cut over the left eye of Linares. This is really high level stuff. Oh, right in the center of the ring. And Linares goes down. Lomachenko scores the knockdown. We're going to uh, mute it right there. You know, uh, thank you to ESPN for being more courteous. It's more the people over um, overseas, you know, in the Ukraine and in Russia and all that that's giving me some issues. But nonetheless, you know, it just looked like, I mean, it was a perfectly timed liver shot. It looked like Jorge Linares did not want to continue. Is that correct? It looked, that's what it looked like to me. It looked like he didn't want to continue. You know, there was the knockdown in round nine. It was round nine, right? In fact, um, I'm going to show you a replay of that later on in the video. But Lomachenko is good. And the good thing is, you know, he's in the 135-pound division. It's not known if he's going to stay. If the WBC title was on the line, because uh, Jorge Linares was a WBC diamond and WBA champion. Linares is, excuse me, um... Lomachenko is now just the WBA champion. So Mikey Garcia has the WBC. If Linares' WBC other belt was on the line too, then Lomachenko would have been the mandatory for the winner of Mikey Garcia um, and IBF champion Robert Easter. That's pretty much almost officially official. You know? And it's supposed to happen in August or so. Um, I'm Tea Street Controversy. This is Tea Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. All the links to my social media are right down below in the description box. And he collected another tip. Like, dude, it's good. You know, we're waiting for the uh, post-fight interview. And if he does one, you know, I mean, I, I, I really, it, in his last fight, for example, when he fought Rigandau, Rigandau, um, him versus Rigandau was a hardcore fan's dream fight. Two fighters with excellent amateur records. One with a more of a uh, bigger backstory. It depends on how you look at it. Where, you know, he had to pretty much be smuggled into the United States, meaning Guillermo Rigondeau. And he was finally getting the biggest fight of his career against the biggest name that people all wanted to see him against, you know? So, they're giving him his belt. Wait, let's, let's, let's listen to this. Of the world... Vasily Loma Lomachenko Pretty awesome, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna uh, wait for his post-fight interview. So, um, he was getting a lot of shit, meaning Lomachenko, because even though Rigondeau had a lot of supporters, Rigondeau was a 122-pound fighter moving up to 130 pounds, and, and, and Lomachenko at that point had already moved from 126, so he didn't want to budge. At one point in time, Lomachenko and Rigondeau were in negotiations where um, Loma was willing to budge on the weight, but... You know, well, I mean, let me let me move this, you know, over here. I don't want to see these goddamn commercials in my background. But like I said, Lomachenko was getting a lot of shit because he ended up making Rigondeau quit. And people didn't think a fighter like Rigondeau would quit. And people were like, you know, Lomachenko is just fighting smaller fighters. Why don't he fight a bigger fighter? He went up and fought. Uh, he went up another division tonight and fought a fighter that had two championships that hasn't lost since 2012. Even though a lot knew that he would lose, still you have to think that he's captured championships in in two weight divisions. I mean, in, in, he's he's a champion in two different weight divisions simultaneously, right? the The concern I have is we saw when he got knocked down by Lenaris, he was trying to go into the Matrix too soon. So for those who don't know who Vasily Lomachenko is, he's called the Matrix. If you haven't seen the Matrix with Keanu Reeves. You know, and Lawrence Fishburne and the other, uh, you know, tall chick with the black hair, short hair. 
you know, Trinity, then you would know that Neo was able to go in and out of reality and shit. That's 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 that Loma. That's Lomachenko. So he was trying to do the Matrix a little too soon, a little too, you know, early. And then he ended up getting caught by the bigger fighter, as he should, um, against Jorge Linares. And many were wondering what type of fight Jorge Linares was going to fight. Was he going to try to go out there and bully Lomachenko? But as you saw, Lomachenko was walking him down because people kept saying, well, Linares is the bigger fighter. He's the bigger fighter. That doesn't mean anything if you're not going to use, you know, um, that to your advantage. For example, uh, um, Linares was the taller fighter, but he wasn't out there trying to, you know, jab and move around and use the reach. You know, he was the bigger fighter looking in regards to weight. He wasn't just trying to walk um, um, uh, Lomachenko down and crowd his space and not allow Lomachenko to box. But Lomachenko was showing that he could fight on the inside. But the point I'm trying to make is that size didn't mean anything. I'm just wondering, you know, if the opportunity arose, could he go to 140? Now, 140 is a whole different domain. You know, because the way they're moving him through divisions, I'm just wondering, you know, how far are they going to take him? And also, what's the next big fight for him? Because the Mikey Garcia fight, well, the winner of Mikey Garcia versus Robert, Robert Easter, that's the best way to put it. It's, uh, wait a minute, where's the post-fight press? We're waiting for the interview. They're taking long. I'm watching it here on my DVR. I want to hear what Lomachenko has to say because sometimes he'd be saying some funny shit. And his, um, his uh, English has gotten a lot better. Um, yeah, they're doing graphics about how um, Oscar De La Hoya, after 22 fights, won a uh, title in three divisions. Mayweather in 34 fights. Pacquiao won his 41st fight. So let me see if I can, you know, fast. Oh, I did get the ESPN Plus app. I'm going to do a video explaining all that a little bit later on so you guys can get a better understanding of what it is. All right, I think we found it rounds and I prepare for last round. Oh, Vasily, nobody said it was going to be easy, but now you are Did they the interview Lenaris already. The game yeah. is too much. I defy you to see this combination of elegance and grit. Remember, this is a guy not Honestly, I can't show it because that's the stuff I be getting poppy pop for copyright for from Ukrainian networks for showing the post fight interview and it's like it's like I'm just the news, I'm reporting the news. But, you know, whatever. We're getting there. We're getting closer. Thank you to ESPN, though, and Top Rank. They've been cool so far. Opinion, 12 fights, three world. Overhand right. Hold on. Championships, three different world. Uh, weight class. Thank you, all fans. My bad. I'm fucking up. Tanko I do. Of course, to being one of the best ever in boxing, in my opinion. So listen, it's right here, fights, but I can't show it. Championships, three different world. Uh, weight classes, unreal. He's with Bernardo. Let's listen in. Thank you very much, Joe. Vasily, nobody said it was going to be easy, but now you are the fastest to win three division world titles. What does it mean to you to do it in your 12th fight? I'm happy, I'm very happy, and I wanted to say, say, uh, say thank you all fans who come to New, uh, Madison Square Garden. I want to say thank you, Jorge Linares, he's a great fighter. He gave me one more lesson in the boxing, uh, so thank you. Round six, that was a big lesson, that overhand right. Walk me through what happened and how you were able to recover. I don't know, it's uh, best his punch, uh, right right hand. And you know, I know about this punch, but he good, he's good. Well, then you finished the fight in the 10th round with one of your best punches, that left hook. Describe how you saw the opening and how you were able to finish the fight. You know, I. Uh, I think about last three rounds and I prepare for last three rounds and uh, I have a I have a uh, exercise from my father body shot got him he, he told me uh, you need work on the body so I do this two elite fighters it was a great fight it was actually even you were up on one scorecard down on another and it was even on the third scorecard would you like a rematch no problem you know <laughs> I, I'm ready for anywhere all right, now we want to talk to Jorge Linares, who came in here and we knew you were an elite fighter. This was a fight that you wanted to prove that you were at the elite level. When you dropped him, what were you thinking? Querías demostrar que eres un peleador de élite. Lo demostraste, sobre todo en ese sexto asalto. ¿Qué pensaste cuando lo tumbaste con esa derecha? Bueno, primero que nada, thank you for everybody for coming to, to this fight. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you to Lomachenko. Thank you to, to his team. 
to both Aaron for top, top round taking promotion, Golden Boy promotion. Thank you for good, good opportunities. So, la verdad que no me sorprendió como realmente pensé que me iba a sorprender con su juego de piernas, con sus golpes en todos lados. Es un boxeador muy bueno, muy, muy, muy bueno. Y la verdad que la, la, la pelea se estaba poniendo interesante, pareja, como lo dije al principio. Y tuve la oportunidad de, sentar, de, de, de darle knockdown. Y bueno, sí, el, el primer golpe que recibí abajo lo, lo, lo recibí bien, lo aguanté. Pero sí me sorprendió en el, en el, en el, en el décimo round. He didn't really surprise me in terms of his speed, but I did recognize the fact that he was moving well, but nothing that I didn't expect. I was able to drop him with that overhand right, and I got myself into this fight, and then he landed a, a body shot. I was able to withstand the first one, but the second one, it was perfectly landed. Te levantaste, ¿podías continuar o hizo lo correcto el referee en detenerla? No, sí podía continuar, pero el referee creo que la paró un poquito adelantada, pero sí me levanté muy, muy, muy tarde. Pero sí, sí podía, sí podía seguir la pelea. Realmente me sentía bastante bien, cara unas condiciones excelentes. Pero sí me, sí me, conectó, me conectó bien. Pero la verdad que lo, lo, lo más que me importaba a mí era seguir trabajando, seguir haciendo mi trabajo. Y bueno, si se me llega a dar la oportunidad, si, si la gente pide la revancha, me encantaría hacer la revancha, ¿por qué no? He said, when he landed that body shot, I think I could have continued. I got up late, I did get up late in the count, but I thought I could continue. That was my mission throughout the entire fight. I wanted to stay on my feet, I wanted to finish this fight. So I think the referee uh, was a little premature in that situation. But if the fans want to see it, and Vasily Lomachenko will give me a shot, I would love to have a rematch. Joe, back to you. What's not happening? Let's just get rid of that right now. It's not, it's, it's, it's not happening. Nobody wants to see that again. And in my opinion, you know, it looked like he could have got up. But don't get me wrong. That was a sick um, um, body shot. You know, you never really expect the smar the smaller fighter to be able to knock out the bigger fighter, especially when you think of it as being a body shot. You know, it's not like Lomachenko was um, working the body and chopping him down like a tree. But let's go look at what that means real quick. Shout out to uh, this website, um, fightnews.com. I haven't had a chance to update my rankings in a while due to, let's call it sick leave. But we're back now, you know? So let's go look at it right now. Here's the uh, divisions, right? And here's the uh, title holders. Now, we're going to do this really quick because I have a live stream to do. In fact, people are already in the comments right now. So you have Mikey Garcia, as I said. And I don't know if Jorge Linares is still going to be the diamond champion. But you have Mikey Garcia, right? who's taken on IBF champion Robert Easter, right? You have, uh, I don't even see where he's ranked right here. But anyway, you have Lomachenko, and this is at 135 pounds, who's now the WBA champion, right? Jorge Linares just lost. You have Ray Beltran, also a top-ranked fighter, which is very, very likely. Hardcore fans can put this together easily and say, yeah, it's going to be Ray Beltran next, you know, and the unification for that WBO. And then they're probably going to make it for the WBA Super. But I'm guessing Linares had the WBA Super, right? Whatever the case may have been, if, if Jorge Linares' Diamond Championship was on the line, and the Diamond, champ the Diamond Championship is very, very weird. You know, in regards to what it means and when it can be up and all that type of stuff. I did research on it, you know, and I know all about it. But the point I'm trying to make is technically if the W if if Lenaris's WBC title was also on the line as well, then that would have made Lomachenko the mandatory for the winner of Mikey Garcia versus Robert Easter. So I'm guessing they're saving this Mikey Garcia versus Jorge Linares uh, rematch. Luke Campbell and Yvonne Mindy. Yvonne Mindy had beat Luke Campbell or, or also ordered um, to fight. Now, of course, Lomachenko was still the 130-pound WBO champion. And Floyd Mayweather, the promoter of Tank Davis, has said pretty much that he's going to be fighting Lomachenko. So we're going to see if that really serious because it did take some, some, some uh, po political hurdles that ESPN has mentioned for this Linares versus um, uh, Lomachenko fight to happen, meaning Golden Boy and uh, Top Rank, even though both are on ESPN still. Golden Boy and Top Rank have had a history of not working with each other. So, you know, um, he has options. You know, Lomachenko has options, whether he wants to stay here and start, you know, fighting um, mandatory challengers or, you know, uh, Top 15 guys, or what's the next big fight is like he's going to pursue. I mean, 140, you know, in like a showcase type fight where he maybe, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You know, the possibilities right now are endless. So 
I don't want this to be a 20 minute video. Also, I want to take a break, you know, so I can go uh, get some H2O, get ready for my hour long live stream. I'm Tea Street Controversy. This is Tea Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe. All the links to my social media are right down below. Um, sorry if in this video I seem a little rusty, but we're getting back into the swing of things, you know, and getting this boxing news out. Please subscribe.